I cannot resist. I know it's right here. There it is. Hoka Evo Speed Go. Feels about the same. Wow. Come on now, come on now, Hoka Torrent 2, first impressions coming right at you in one second, but first, we're in recovery mode. Oh, Nelly, so today's run, uh, which I labeled the run today, Inflection Point on Strava, and the reason I did that is because I'm feeling so much better in 2020 with respect to how my legs and body feel after a run like yesterday up, up and down Pikes Peak. And I decided, I opted, and yes, we're working toward 50 miles in the Ultra Torin 4. Uh, just so you know, one of my favorite recovery shoes of 2019 and even late 2018 was the Ultra Torin uh, 3.5, just to get that nice zero drop stretch. So we're working toward 50 miles in this shoe. We'll get there eventually. Bottom line, inflection point feels good. Uh, I just felt good today. 10 miles, about 8.30 a mile. Like I'm a little sore, but I'm not dying. I'm not dying. That's a, that's a good sign for the overall body. Let's dive in. First impressions, Hoka. Torrent 2, that's how you spell it on your screen right now. We're looking at a five millimeter drop from heel to toe, 26 millimeter stack head in the heel, 21 millimeter in the forefoot. We're looking at 7.5 ounces for women's size eight or 212 grams, 9.2 ounces in men's size nine or 260 grams. And actually everyone, I have not weighed it yet in my size. I like to give you sometimes my gut reaction. Here we go, 8.4, 8.4, not too shabby for a trail running shoe. And that is 239 grams in my size. We're looking at an engineered mesh upper with some pretty decent overlay going on really throughout the shoe, especially here. It pays, gosh, I actually didn't even notice. It's through the midfoot as well. So this overlay just to help, again, keep some of the mud, debris, and maybe a little bit of water out. That's actually pretty, pretty neat. I like how this overlay, which of course adds some weight to the shoe, but if you're getting out there in the mud, um, some very, you know, puddle, running through puddles, I think this overlay that wraps all the way around the toe box, frankly, all the way around the shoe, even in, the, oh, that's interesting. In the heel counter, it kind of rises up a little bit. Anyway, I'm actually overall pretty excited about this overlay, especially if you live in a wetter, you know, an area that gets more rain, which is not Denver, but that's okay. Um, so good work on the overlays. It is a semi-gusseted tongue, all right? So the, the tongue is semi-gusseted, not all the way. I'm very impressed. Uh, I noted this as I was lacing up, very stout laces. If you like laces that are not gonna fray or tear or whatever, like these laces, I know it's a very small detail of a shoe, uh, but these laces are very, very well built. Um, I'm gonna say the heel collar and counter and even the tongue, whatever, everything that wraps around your ankle is approaching uh, the, what I would say that is the plush category. So lots of cushion. It's not like, uh, it's not the most plush I've ever seen for a trail running shoe, but it, it's approaching plush for the cushion through the collar. And I didn't feel, and I got to keep testing, just first impression. I got to, uh, I didn't feel a ton of breathability through the toe box. There are some little holes cut into that engineered mesh. Um, but again, you know, if, so if you're in, let's say you're in, you know, Southern New Mexico or uh, anywhere that's really hot, Southern California or Texas, or I don't know, anywhere that's really hot, I don't know how this shoe would perform if you're running in the middle of the day or hopefully you're not in the middle of the summer. But uh, so anyway, that is the update on the breathing ability of the upper and moving on to that midsole so the heart of the shoe what hoka calls their pro fly midsole i'm going to agree with them what i read on their website a softer landing with a pretty good not amazing but pretty good toe off feel so a little bit firmer through the forefoot but softer through the heel and i wish i had a durometer scale basically the firmness or the uh, just like the thumb test as you press into that midsole it's got some decent give to it uh, I'm not sure yet we'll keep testing if it's soft but it's got some decent give it was a pleasant surprise I must say because I tested this shoe out after all the FKTs up in Buena Vista and my legs were feeling it and they were ready to just rest a little bit and have a nice soft cushion 
wind ride. So overall, I'm, I'm pleased, very pleased with the midsole ride of the Hoka Torrent 2. And before I forget, uh, what was it? 8.4 in my size. I just remembered I wanted to weigh and compare it to the Speed Go 4. So yes, 8.4 in my size. Here is the Speed Goat uh, 4. And I can sense this is gonna be quite a bit heavier. So yeah, wow, whoa, 10.6. Oh my goodness, okay, that's amazing. Uh, so to over two ounces, that is very, very interesting. Good for, good intel for you to know. And I'm not gonna weigh it against the EVO Speed Goat at this point, uh, but anyway, 8.4 uh, once again for the Torrent 2. And for that outsole, in my research, I was trying to find the lug depth. Uh, and this is just an estimate. I'm gonna go with three millimeters, maybe four millimeters. So it's actually pretty solid. Like I felt very, very, now the trails I was running on, testing the shoe out were not an overly aggressive trails, but I'm liking this multi-directional lug pattern. It's kind of a marbled look and what they're calling a sticky rubber. It's, I could sense that this, this uh, outsole pattern could do really, really well, uh, even on some pretty, you know, pretty aggressive trail running. So not only, I'm not gonna say, it's definitely not, I wouldn't put it in the commuter shoe category for trail running shoes, uh, but I think you could do, you know, fairly buffed out trails and then all the way up to very aggressive trails, you know, height, you know, going up big mountains, uh, like I, you know, like I did up in Buena Vista just last week. For that fit and comfort of the Torrent 2, I went true to size on fit. I'm glad that I did, but if you have a really wide forefoot, so basically your toes, uh, I bet your toes are gonna press up a little bit against the outer walls through the toe box. So just keep that in mind. Uh, Hoka is kind of known for that, and I don't, I don't mind it. But then again, I don't have the widest four uh, foot, and four foot especially on the planet. All right, and then the comfort. Um, gosh, if I had to put a number on it, I would put it at a six and a half, maybe seven for the upper. It's not screaming comfortable, but it does the job. I am gonna say though, the ride of the midsole, and at that weight class, man, 8.4. I'm very pleased. I'm gonna put it at an eight out of 10 for that midsole ride. Very excited about what they're doing with the ProFly midsole. So good work, Hoka. And uh, stability wise, I did not feel unstable at all with 26 and 21. That's not very high. It's, you know, a lot of Hoka shoes can be much higher than that. And so I felt grounded, uh, one with the earth, and just like I'm not going to topple over out there on the trails. Again, I'll take this shoe on some more aggressive trails sooner rather than later just to test how it does on more rockier conditions. For the durability prediction, 500 miles, that might be a little generous, but I'm gonna go 500, just what my gut is telling me based on the lug depth and the coverage that you're getting. It's not fully covered rubber, just there is exposed midsole foam there. So maybe 500's a little high, but I'm gonna stick with 500. How will I use this shoe moving forward? I'm gonna say a daily trainer uh, for those classic like 12 to let's say 22 mile long runs on the trails. I don't. I wouldn't take this out, let's say on a buffed out road or a butt like the Highline Canal here in Denver. Just a little too aggressive through that uh, through that outsole lug pattern, but you know, going out for, you know, if you're training for an ultra marathon and you didn't want a shoe that is two ounces heavier, like the Speed Go 4, you wanted something a little more nimble? Gosh, oh my goodness, you know what I just thought? Like, okay, race in the Hoka EVO Speed Goat for a 50K and then train in the Torrent 2 so you can save the EVO Speed Goat, you know, keep it fresh for actual race day. Oh, you guys, I can't, I can't, I can't resist. I cannot resist. I know it's right here. There it is, Hoka EVO Speed Goat. Feels about the same. Wow, what's going on? Am I going crazy? 8.6. The Evo Speed Goat is a little heavier. I'm going crazy. All right, Torrent Two, you just you just worked your way up. Uh, that is exciting. That's so I, I can't. Res it's it's a little lighter, and these are the exact same weight. Or sorry, exact same size. Yep, yep, the exact same size. Uh, men's seven and a half. The Evo Speed Goats. Okay, that's blowing my mind. Blowing my mind, everyone. Moving on to that price point, I just got really excited. $120, they nailed it. I think they could even bump it up to 125 or 130. Like $120, lighter than the Evo Speed Goat. I didn't, on, you guys, you're getting my gut reaction here. I did not realize how light this shoe was pulling it out of the box. Good work, Coca. $120. I have a feeling this is gonna become a popular Hoka trail running shoe. 
of 2020. This is blowing my mind right now. And I almost forgot to mention my positive and drawback. Right now, no drawback. This is a good sign. Obviously, the weight has to be the positive. Just blowing my mind. Like anything under nine is great for a trail shoe in my size. So 8.4 and lighter than the EVO Speedgo, 100%. That is my positive. There you go. First impressions. Hoka Torrent 2 kind of uh, surprising me right now. This is good, good, good. And yes, oh man, I'm going to say by like July 1st, I'll be ready for the trail running shoe matrix 2020. So stay tuned for that question of the day. We always, we're talking a lot about running, talking a lot about training, running shoes, obviously on the channel, but this is just a, something fun, something for the summer. Here we go. Uh, if you question of the day, if, <laughs> it's kind of a fun one, but I, you know, help us get to know each other a little bit down in the comments. If you had a theme song, what would it be? If you had a theme song, what would it be? What would be your theme song? And maybe you need to ask like a friend or a family member, like when you think of like what theme song comes to mind, I, I'll go ask True Love and I'll try to remember to comment down below. Uh, once I wake up because this, you know, publishes at 5 a.m. and you all are the early birds. I'm rarely up at 5 a.m mountain time all right everyone thanks for being here thanks for watching we're gonna toss it back to the you know what we'll toss it to the hoka uh, uh running shoe playlist hoka running shoe playlist if you want to dive into all the hoka shoes that i've reviewed on the channel it'll be right there right there right there onward and upward seek beauty work hard and love each other see you tomorrow